coding and creativity. They give you they power, give power at your, at your fingertips. fingertips. So many so new many opportunities, new opportunities start, start with a simple, with a simple idea, idea and a line, and a line of, code. of code. You don't believe me? Just watch. You can build a website to support a local business. For example, a shop selling flowers. Just look at all these gorgeous colours. Or you can develop an app and help people stay fit and healthy. I know you'd like that. You can also make your own game and play with your friends. With creative coding, you can fix many annoying problems. For example, use data to help your city get rid of a traffic jam. And of course, coding can awake the artist within you. For instance, you can create and share music with your friends. A simple line of code can help you change the world. You are just a click away from learning. Go to the codeweek.eu website and kick off your coding journey. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Code Week wrap up. Hello. 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 Let's I first am, start with uh, the I'm two Anika. Of us. Anika. Yeah, my name is Jakub Hellowen, <laughs> and uh, we are just uh, starting with this new tool. So we are learning how to use it, and we but we welcome everyone here at the Code Week wrap up 2021. And Anika, we're going to we meet some busy uh, schedule, right today. Yeah, we have a busy schedule. We're going to meet some uh, of the most uh, uh, the ambassadors from some of the most active countries. So Malta, Poland, and Turkey, for example. There are also other countries, but uh, we will meet those three. We will also speak to some teachers who have organized activities. We will have the winner of the EU Code Week Hackathon today with us and much more and much more. But first of all, let's have a look at the results because we broke uh, the news today at, I think, 16 uh, uh, o'clock Central European time. So, Anika, where do we stand with the number of activities? We broke. Uh, we have broken the, the record uh, of uh, last year, which was the highest ever. So uh, I will refresh now. We have seventy three thousand one hundred and seventy six uh, activities registered on the website. This is fantastic! Uh, bravo, everyone! I think That's we will great. see it there. Yes, yep. so it's on codeweek.eu and it still keeps uh, growing. And we also want to invite you today to uh, continue building our word cloud that we have started um, a couple of days ago, actually at the beginning of Code Week. Uh, now, the the question there is how would you describe EU Code Week in one word? And, and we see that uh, we already have some nice words, but if you want to contribute, you just need to go to menti.com and use the code that is written here, 20, 70, 14, 30. And when you use this code, you will be able to uh, add more to this word cloud. So that's for it now. And Annika, uh, over to you and your first guests, I think. Yes, let's welcome the country ambassadors of the three most active countries. So I would like to say hello to Adil Tugyan, who is the Code Week ambassador for Turkey, and which uh, right now, maybe a minute ago or so, has organized uh, more than 26,000 activities. And you're fifth on the scoreboard. Then we have Gregor. I'm sorry, but I will not even attempt your last name, uh, who is uh, one of the ambassadors of Poland with uh, almost 15,000 activities. And you are third on the scoreboard. And then we have uh, Bernadette uh, Serrafa uh, from Malta, ambassador in Malta. And you are second on the scoreboard with 413 activities. So just let me explain to everyone that the scoreboard is the number of activities per capita. So um, the small, it's a little bit easier for the smaller countries, right, Nadette? Or, or you maybe Not you won't exactly. agree. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, uh, could you please tell us? the secret behind the success of Code Week in your countries. Uh, how do you manage to engage so many teachers and schools? Let, let's start with Adil and Turkey. Yeah, because, um, hi, by the way, it's great. It's really great for me to be here and also celebrate the, the, the good news with you. I got an email just before starting the, the computer and hearing the news that it's another record even a record for us too. That, that's great, really. 
and it, it just deserves to be celebrated really for you know Europe maybe. So the secret I have three I can just tell three words for the secret. First a good planning and then a good uh, relationship with the, with the organizers because uh, and the power of social media. And uh, the by the planning I mean before the code week starts even two weeks or three weeks ago I start to post some announcements. And then I, I just create all the documents for the teachers, just uh, just uh, categorized to the age of the students and the schools. So uh, they, and also I I I um, uh, really want them to go to the web page and just uh, check the, all the resources done by the European Commission our web page because actually we have um, a secret here. Uh, the, the biggest secret here is just our web page. It's really very clear, and all the teachers can just, if they know where to go when they have a questions, if if they are directed in the right way, so it will be very easy for them to find everything. That the, the web page is wonderful, Great. and uh, thank you. yeah, really, I like it because it it's it's uh, it makes our our job really easier. So we don't get if we, if we just direct the teachers to there, we don't get any more questions anymore. This this year it was really fine. In, in in previous years it was not in Turkish exactly. It was just translated by Google Translate. It was a bit complicated for me. So I was having a lot of questions on my even on my phone, uh, my private phone, the from the teachers they didn't know. But this year I only few questions I get really and I just even directed them to the web page. Okay. So um, after 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 the first um, uh, contact, and then we I have a webinar, and this year's webinar was really very it was a success really because we had almost one thousand five hundred teachers just joining the webinar this year, and if you just calculate and they are just just con contacting with the teachers from their school and uh, from their friends and from their project partners and it. it it, it, it just spreads the word. And what was the webinar about? It was about why coding is important and what, what uh, the, actually the, the name was uh, as a 21st century coding as a 21st century skill. So uh, the, the, the webinar has three parts. It lasts about one and a half hour. First, why coding is important, what is happening around the world. And in the second part, um, what is coding and what is code week? And in the third, what type of schools and what age of students uh, should use which activities, which apps, and which uh, uh, which uh, web pages or or uh, web, web platforms actually? And then um, we all, I also answer all the questions there uh, related to the to the code week and then we just record it and share it uh, in, in our e-tuning pl platform. I'm one of the e-tuning content developers and e-learning uh, experts. Okay. So it is easy. And then um, I, I always give them feedback on our uh, social media, Facebook. And at the end, I just invite the teachers. So we will be doing it next week. They will be presenting some of their uh, activities to their friends and they people will just inspire from each other. So uh, in short, <laughs> that's planning and uh, a good feedback, interaction, and also our web page. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. What uh, about you, Nadette, in, in Malta? Uh, what is the secret to your success? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's not very different from what uh, Adil has just it, uh, Planning. Planning is the crux of it all. We kick off um, around uh, the end of August uh, with a launch, with a Code Week launch. You were invited for the launch last year. We try to make it every year different, but obviously for the past two years, because of COVID, we had to do it online. But we try to do it as interesting as possible. And most important of all, we try to attract more players. It, it, it is my ambition to get more and more people, not just schools, although the schools are the backbone of everything. This year, we managed to attract local councils who teamed up with the um, villages primary school. So it was very good. We even invited, issued an open call for tutors coding 
uh, mm -hmm. to code during uh, code week. And we attracted uh, students who are following a degree in IT. I mean, they don't really need to be professors. And we got a good response from there. And obviously, we always keep our social media up to date. We find the EU Code Week webpage brilliant, helpful, and most important of all, our cooperation with the EDU coordinator and the lead teachers. They are they are indispensable. I, I wouldn't manage to do it without them because, I mean, I we discuss and they action. Yeah. Basically, that's it. Fantastic. And what about you, uh, Grzegorz? Uh, how does it work in Poland or, uh, yeah? <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I, and, I, and I prepare three points. Uh, yes. First point is, is on this long fashion for Code Week. Uh, the Code Week in Poland is the most biggest education initiative uh, in the Polish school. This is more every school on the beginning of the year asking us in this year we will be, we'll be coding Code Week. This is the first reason. Second reason is many partners. Mm -hmm. We have very big group of organizers. Uh, organizer is a uh, councillor of prime minister on the gov level. NASC Institute uh, sec as secretariat. Uh, we have uh, we have too many uh, many commercial companies like very big tech like Google, Amazon, and other, of course. And we have so many very big uh, non-government organization. In this year, the special uh, we have special uh, cooperating with three organization. Uh, one is uh, program one teach children. We teach children to program. This is regular long time participant uh, of Code Week. And the same multi year old uh, in Code Week digital code dialogue. This is new initiative. Also, uh, who preparing up thousands of events in this uh, uh, in this uh, year. Also, next uh, reason is a very big social group on Facebook. Especially, yes. uh, this is a special super reference group. This is a group uh, where participating are many teachers of, of the year in Poland. This is this teacher promoting uh, played a key role as promotional role on digital education in Poland, and Code Week is something like natural ambassador of, of Code Week in Poland. Also, this also next reason is of course uh, good information, good cooperation with media, good cooperation with the local governments, everything. Okay, so I think here, here, planning, uh, planning, uh, good contacts with um, the relations with the teachers and other stakeholders, maybe the ministry or organizations, and good social media. Um, I was just wondering, um, uh, Adil, you also have, I've seen that you have been active giving webinars uh, around Europe on artificial intelligence. Uh, yeah. For example, and other things. But why do you why do you think it's important to get coding and okay, computational thinking, computing, whatever you want to call it, into schools for you? Why is this important? Oh yeah, because uh, I think the first and one of the one of the most important reasons for this is coding will be the the, the writing of the future in the in the very near future. So uh, we uh, students without learning coding. And uh, for their future uh, careers, it will be impossible for them just to go, go, uh, just to move ahead without coding in the future. So uh, that's the reason I, I just want the, the students in our country and also the st students all in Europe just to know coding and they create their own products and uh, which have a very high value in, and they can support their ec economy and their life as well. So um, that, that is the most important thing because uh, I think around 9, 20, 30, everything will be so different in Turkey in, and, in, and also around, around the world mostly. And uh, until that time, so if we had the chance just to teach or even just to give a very little glimpse of uh, coding, then maybe most of them will move ahead and then they will be very useful for themselves and for their countries in the future. That, that's the thing that I am aiming to prepare them to future for their future life, actually, and communicate yes. language, maybe. <laughs> I think we all agree. Uh, now that in Malta, you ran um, the autumn teacher training school, the Code Week teacher training school. Uh, how was that? And why did you decide to launch that this autumn? 
um, uh, the autumn, I didn't understand. The summer school or the autumn school. Ah, the summer the school. The week. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. Yes, <laughs> summer was, school. Okay, it was a very big success. Obviously, we, we applied and we were um, successful. It was held there and we got a lot of interest for that. The, the reason why we decided to apply for that, it's very obvious no, to get more teachers engaged and coding and code week and everything that goes with it. Yeah, and um, Gergos, do you, I saw that last year you had online uh, webinars for teachers. I don't know what you did this year. Have they gone back to being so physical? Many. Or so many, I don't, uh, I, I don't count uh, how many webinars. On the Gov level, we have uh, a, 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 about 10 uh, webinars from the central level. We have about thousands on the regional level from the local teachers. I don't. I must. I must one more to cut this every every events on the regional level, and we have so many individual uh, individual consultation on the local level. This is this is interesting for me. This is new for in for Poland because a local teacher uh, uh, teaching teacher how to prepare event in COVID. This is something new mm -hmm. for me. I, I have okay. about uh, thousands of photos from this local uh, local consultation about COVID. You have to Absolutely. do a mosaic. <laughs> yeah, just uh, one more question uh, before we move move on. We we got some reactions that uh, many teachers were um, tired after last year's uh, lockdown, and it had been very difficult because they were trying to they have been trying to catch up with activities. So we're very surprised now that we have uh, beaten the record uh, of last year and the the year of of all years. How, what is your reaction to you? Have you felt this, the, the teachers' fatigue? I, for, I see them as enthusiastic as always, of course, but uh, that's the people we, we, we get for Code Week. I don't know if who wants to start. Yeah, uh, I can start maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I also work online a lot last year with a lot of webinars, even for, for European School Net and for my own country, for the Ministry of National Education. And the teachers, every night, teachers were really attending them. So uh, online lessons, online webinars, everything was online and the seat teachers really f felt fatigue. And uh, mm. the, the, so, but during, uh, where, what I really observed that, that surprised me that during the COD week last year, the teachers were very, very enthusiastic and because they were just going out of their, uh, their, uh, their usual a curriculum or their usual schedule. They are doing something different with their, their students and even the teachers and the students were feeling very comfortable. They were just uh, not teaching their uh, just traditional curriculum to the students, but they were just teaching some uh, coding or some kind of games. So students and teachers were very, very active. Even we just had them to get over that I think tiredness a bit during that two weeks time because they was I saw that that they were really really enthusiastic during the activities. Okay. So, and also last year the, the 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 number of the activities were so high even in Turkey it was twenty four yeah. thousand or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, and what, and, yeah. Sorry. And uh, Grigorz, have you felt this fatigue? Uh, I guess you have more events this year than no, a little bit less so no. far, but. It's more the same. The pandemic, the pandemic has a positive impact on programming in Poland. This, uh, okay. this is my opinion because okay. we have so many yeah. active activity in, uh, with so many people learning to programming. Not only on school, on, uh, uh, we have we working with so many people, adults, people who want to programming for now. It's totally new yeah. for us. So. And we have, uh, maybe you know, in, in Europe is some big organization, mm -hmm. University mm -hmm. of the Age. Mm -hmm. Maybe University for Older People. Uh, we have some special, some, uh, we have few of events generated by the special University for Older People in Poland. This is totally yeah, new. Yeah, okay. So. Okay. So also older people. That's, that's uh, yeah. great to hear. And what about you, Nadette? Uh, what is your feeling about this, no. this edition? No, this edition was by far better than last year's. Last year's for a lot of reasons, even the schools were not uh, did not open immediately on the date, so we struggled, we struggled. But this year it was amazing, and I even got teachers contacting me personally. No, it was very okay, good, fantastic. and the interest was more, had, has increased considerably this year. 
Okay, I think the, um, we're going to wrap up here and move on in the program. Um, but thank you very much for participating you, and congratulations you, to your amazing thank job you. uh, and to our, our common um, record. Uh, we have two months left, so uh, they will all, of course, we may be aiming at 80,000. What do you say, Jakob? Uh, well, I should hope. be ambitious, right? Yes. But uh, <laughs> as, as we say, it's it's. Uh, Today it's the first day after Code Week, but in effect, we continue until the end of the year. But I very much enjoyed all the debate. So thanks to thanks really to the ambassadors and 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 once more, you are doing guys an, an extraordinary job. I mean, with Gregos, as we were discussing before we started, that that uh, your la your nights in the last two or three weeks were full of oh, <laughs> accepting <laughs> events, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> So big thanks, big thanks, Thank and, you. Uh, and take care. Thank you, so and, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. Bye. 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 So Anika, thanks, uh, thanks for doing this interview. I think it was in, 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 in interesting and, and really, really inspiring. Um, but we also, I wanted to first uh, of all say that we are also receiving many comments on Facebook and YouTube. So I'm happy that uh, everything is working. And please keep those comments coming and share your experience in the chat and in the comments. And um, this year was also special for us because we received some uh, some special support, right? From the... Yes. Um, we had all the commission, a few of the commissioners uh, expressed their support for Code Week uh, and vice presidents, of course. Um, Vestager from Denmark, yes. Czech Republic. Um, well, Greece. let's watch the video. Let, yeah, let's, let's watch, watch the France, video. France. Let's have a look at the Bulgaria, video. Bulgaria, everyone. Yes, yes. Learning to use technology isn't just cracking the code of a complex computer program, it's cracking the code of the world that we live in. Understand why we see this instead of that, why we hear this instead of that. So we must all get the right digital skills. So to all of you, happy EU Code Week. We all walk our study on computers. We drive cars and stream TV series and films thanks to millions of line codes. We tend to forget, but everything in digital technology starts with a line of code. Being able to understand it, to write it in a meaningful sequence, is truly the superpower of the 21st century. And those who participate in EU Code Week take a first step to acquire this skill. Always striving for the best is part of the DNA of European culture and heritage. Europe needs a skills revolution and the Code Week can be an important contribution to our jump to the digital age. Do not miss this opportunity to become creators, creators. not just, not passive, just consumers passive consumers of digital technology. If you always wanted to try coding, then EU Code Week is there to help you get started. And I like to encourage both girls and boys to improve their digital skills, create content rather than consume it, and be ready for the world of tomorrow. I have been involved in uh, the creation of a coding school called Fit for Coding some years ago. Getting these digital skills has proven invaluable for getting a quality job. By participating in the European Code Week, you are one click closer to acquire and master a new language, a global language that you can pass on and teach around you. Technologies are what we make of them. You can become actors of change in a world more connected and more green. Indeed, so we received uh, some huge support from the top level European politicians, but most importantly, Co Code Week is a grassroots initiative, it's a grassroots movement, and it's the teachers and the organizers and you, all of you who participate and who organize activities that bring 
um, this initiative to every corner of Europe. And uh, we had a very pleasant surprise this year because uh, one of the top countries per capita, or maybe even the top country per capita, uh, capita uh, that, was, um, that was most active during this year's Code Week was Monaco. And in Monaco, we have uh, a teacher, Sandrine Korn, who, uh, hello, Sandrine, how are you? Hello. 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 Um, Sandrine, you um, did um, or organized many activities, and I think you are uh, behind one of the forces behind this success in Monaco to bring uh, actually Monaco on top of the list. But first of all, can you say a little bit more about you, where, uh, in which school you are active, and uh, what exactly you are doing um, in that school? Yeah, I'm a French school teacher and uh, I work in a Monégasque school. Uh, name is uh, Ecole des Revoirs. Is it a primary school or is it a secondary it's school? It's a primary school, yes. Okay. I have 10 uh, uh, year old uh, pupils. Okay, very good, thanks. And uh, we saw many uh, tweets from you also reporting from the activity. So, uh, was it the first year that you were part of Code Week? Um, uh, and if yes, why did you choose? Why did you choose this year to to join? Yes, first, what you have to know uh, is that in Monaco, under the initiative of His uh, Serene Highness Prince Albert II, coding is a real part of school curricula. Uh, every pupil in the world in a Monega school, from kindergarten to uh, high school, receive one hour of coding lessons. So it's very important for us. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the first time uh, we have done uh, Code Week, but uh, uh, this year our primary uh, school uh, principal asked us to register. Very good. Yes, but uh, every time, uh, every week, we have to do uh, coding activities. So um, during the Code Week, we try to bring something uh, new with uh, these lessons. Okay, and so what was the new thing that you brought in this year? <laughs> this. <laughs> ah, yes, what is it? It's is Puppet. It? Ah, okay. In so with, France, this, with this you teach coding? Yes. Can you explain how you do it? Um, in fact, it, it's like a grid pattern, you know? So uh, we have done some activities where you have to code uh, a pass or you have already a coded pass and you have to uh, realize it by uh, popping uh, <laughs> the bubble. That's super cool. So it's, it's yes, really it's a, easy. It's an unplug uh, activity so everyone can do it. And, um, yeah, and what, also, what do the, what do you just students say when you when you when you bring them when you bring the activity to them uh do they enjoy how how, how what do they say <laughs> yes they are very uh, enthusiastic all the time they want to to play all the day long it's a uh, it's coding uh, spirit <laughs> and yeah. uh, um, we um we have also uh, a recent endowment of uh, augmented reality activity maths about uh, ocean and about uh, space. So uh, we decided to use it with uh, with Bluebot. Uh, Bluebot. Mm -hmm. Yes. This yes, kind yes. of uh, little uh, robot. So um, the goal of this activity was how to use robots to help humans to take care of our Earth. Okay. Uh, that was that's, a... that's super. Yeah. Yeah, that's super interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And uh, is it only you at your school who does the activities, or do you already have? Uh, as, as this is not the first time, and it's just that you are registering that you have already um, a group of teachers who are who are familiar with, uh, with uh, these all, concepts. All teacher in my school, but also all teacher in all school in Monaco. We are very involved in, uh, in coding because uh, we are very lucky. We have uh, many, uh, many means. We have many resources and also many training because it's uh, uh, a real uh, key. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's uh, very important. 
<laughs> you, you need and, all this. And for the involvement of, of all the schools, do you think that it's important that what you described at the beginning, that you have the curricula and you have coding embedded in it so that it's a natural part such as mathematics or such as biology? Is this something that helps you to bring more of these activities and of coding activities to the schools? I think it's a uh, all mix of all that. Maybe you can precise your your question. Yeah, my, my question was whether the fact that you have coding in the curricula helps mm -hmm. in the curriculum, makes it easier to bring more of coding activities in schools because we have countries in Europe that don't have the coding in curricula and then you know, it might be even more difficult for teachers to propose these activities because um, it's not it's not in the let's say in the guidelines. So uh, it's difficult for them to to do these activities at school. So my question was whether you think that having coding in curricula is something important that helps you bring coding to the classroom or mode coding activities to the classroom. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. You you have to you have to do so. Uh... You, you have to train uh, even by yourself uh, as it's one hour a week you have to find uh, new ideas uh, so i think it's something that uh, help uh, us to to have a successful code week okay Sandrine, thank you very much my last question do you already think about 2022 do you, it will be 10th 10th anniversary of eu code week we will be celebrating 10 years of uh, of existence do you already have in mind some special activities that you will do with your students maybe some new activities like the poppy <laughs> uh, yes i i have seen on um, on twitter a new uh, platform where you can drive a virtual robot so i think my uh, pupils will uh, enjoy it a lot. And we have also uh, at school some uh, micro bites, you know? Mm -hmm. and, micro uh, yeah. Yes, 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 micro, micro bit. So um, I, I have uh, a lot of ID with this because you can integrate it in uh, IT uh, ID. Okay, well, fingers crossed for that. Thank you very yeah. much for being with us uh, today Thanks. and good luck. And congratulations to bringing Monaco, you and your... Yes, we are very proud. Very <laughs> proud. <laughs> well done. Okay, so, so Andrin, thank you and take care. Bye-bye. Now we're going to look a little uh, bit at uh, something that's important. Reporting, Jakob. Why is it important uh, to report activities? There are, many things, there are many things that are important, but I think that, that after Code Week um, finishes, it's always uh, a call from us to the, code, to the activity organizers to report activities. Um, because, first of all, we need to get some statistics, of course. We want to see how many people participated, how many girls participated, um, and what were the activities about. But most importantly, the organizers... Uh, they can receive an, a certificate, right, Annika? Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, very nice certificate. I don't know. Are you going to show it? Yes, uh, yes, yes. I yes. Have it there, but maybe we, for, maybe we can maybe show report first. Yes. How to report the activities, right? So, yeah. Uh, so, let me so. Share my screen. Basically, you go to your profile. Uh, as you, if you have created an activity, you go to the profile, uh, and there it will say in your in your language, uh, report your activities. Uh, so here you see my activities, for example. And we're going to report the hackathon final, and you see there report the activities. Uh, you click you click on that. And you come in, uh, it's very small for me, the screen, I better do it live. Uh, you have different fields you have to fill in. Um, for example, the number of participants. So um, I think for the hackathon final, we've had a couple of hundred people uh, who were watching and have watched now. And then we also put the average age of the participants because this is something we communicate uh, about afterwards. And the percentage of, uh, of females. Um, and then the name for the certificate. So the, when once you have filled this in, you can't change it. So you have to think really hard uh, about the name. So if you put your name or the school's name or the or the team name. So I put EU Code Week team, for example. You can see it there. Uh, and then when I press submit activity.
activity report, uh, then I can go and get my, my certificate, but I cannot change it after that. So be very careful. You see there, Jakob got a it is nice my certificate. certificate. <laughs> That's a, from another event, but anyway. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Congratulations, Jakob. Thank you very much. I'm enjoying it and I will print it out. But yeah, the certificate is very nice. And I also see now on social media that there are many uh, already activity organizers that are sharing. So please continue do, doing so. Um, and please keep that uh, keep that flow uh, keep that flow coming. And and our main plea is do go to the website and please report the activities. Um, yeah, Anika, you wanted to mention also something on the gender gap, right? Because um, yes, that's, that's uh, we something usually... that is very important for us. Yeah, we are very proud that uh, I think we usually have uh, between 44, I think our maximum has been 48% of participants being girls. And there is a big gender gap, uh, as everyone probably knows, in in um, for people studying and working with uh, technology and digital te technology or as ICT specialists. So it's uh, it's an aim uh, to get more girls and women interested in, in this field. So that's why we are very happy for, for these uh, numbers around half, just under half uh, of participants are girls. Yeah, maybe the last reminder, we expect that we will have uh, the results from this year again as this as every year around january so yes because be... you can keep reporting your you can keep uh, registering activities and organizing activities until the end of the year and obviously reporting them as well and you can also uh, take part in the code week for all challenge which is about connecting yourself as an organizer with nine at least nine other people who organize activities or people in in two other countries and then you get the certificate of excellence uh, which is even more uh, valuable certificate even more, even cooler. It's even cooler. Even cooler. Now, Annika, I think you have prepared a video for us now to introduce the next guest, and you have shared it with me. So I'm. I'm going I to didn't play do it, it though. Uh, I, but let's <laughs> well, share. Let's share it. Was it. Not you, but you, you sent I just shared link. it. So, yes. so let's watch first the video, and then let's get it. Let's get ready for our next guest, who will be from the Netherlands. Jakob, uh, what did we just see, do you think? It was a kind of code week dance to the old to code music, right? So it's almost like our anthem. Uh, it is our it, anthem. It, it's, I, it is our anthem, right? I think so. I think we are absolutely the only coding initiative in the world who has, has our own anthem. Yes, indeed, and, I guess so. But it's fun and it's good and we see how uh, how people get excited about it. Let's now talk to Ramon Morlag, who is the Code Week ambassador in the Netherlands, and Franka van Dursen, uh, who is a teacher. And I think you challenged like 300 classes to dance the EU Code Week dance in the Netherlands. How yes. did you come up with this idea, Franka? And uh, how did you manage to involve so many people? Um, it was not my idea. Um, um, 
only for, for me. It was uh, it is a cooperation from um, a lot of uh, schools um, in Brainport area, and um, for a few years we uh, we organize um, one day a year uh, um, an event. It's called uh, Make a Day, and uh, we uh, got children involved with uh, inventors, uh, technology, uh, the world that's around them, and. Um, yeah, last year uh, it wasn't possible to do that, um, and we um, uh, we organized an online week, and um, yeah, uh, children got very enthusiastic. A lot of people uh, did along, and uh, this year we thought, why, uh, yeah, do, don't we do it a code week, uh, O to code, because it's so important to um, yeah to give attention of, of that uh, event. And uh, yeah, also a lot of people uh, liked it and uh, danced with us. So <laughs> fantastic! For, could you tell, like, the people maybe who are watching who are not into code week and, and coding, how 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 is a dance linked to computational thinking and coding? How how is it linked? Um, yeah, dancing is is uh, taking step by step uh, and and uh, make a. Um, uh, 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 yeah, uh, a movement, and, and that's what coding is. It's uh, from A to B in logical steps, and dancing is that as well. And uh, it, it is fun uh, both ways. And so what were we, the reactions we know, of uh, children? Uh, it's very low to to step in, but you can go very high uh, with with uh, robots and and stuff. You can do it at your own way and with your own skills. Very and good. um yeah we live in in uh, brainport area it's it's a very high tech uh, uh environment so um it's very important to to understand for the kids that they can be a maker of that and a creator mm -hmm. instead of yeah only a consumer and yes. um, also for teachers um, in the netherlands it's not um uh, part in uh, it, it's not yet in um um in the curricula we don't um, yeah I, I was, in the um, curricula i think is the word the you're looking for yes yes it's not in the curri curriculum so not yet it's it's coming but it's very important to us to, to get uh, people involved to get teachers involved and see uh, and let them see how important it is to get involved and not to lay down but to, to yeah to start at any level yeah. Fantastic. Uh, Ramon, I, I see in the scoreboard, because, you know, that is my every day during cold week. That's what I look at about 10 times a day. Uh, so I have seen, for example, that uh, Netherlands had made a huge jump to 518. That was a few minutes ago or maybe even <laughs> half an hour ago. So probably it's gone up. And it, there were only 157 activities last year. So that's like three times as much. What, what, did, what have you done this year that uh, has brought all these activities to the Netherlands? Well, we did, uh, did qu quite a few things. We had a lot of things planned, but sadly, due to Corona, we needed to cancel a few uh, activities. And, um, well, you, you know the saying, when a door closes, a window opens, and uh, Franca is one of those windows. Um, she, she asked me, well, I, I want to import a few activities uh, regarding the Code Week uh, event uh, panel. Um, they are quite similar to uh, each other. Can you help me? Because it's a lot of work. And well, I'm a computer scientist, so <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little, more than a little bit lazy. And I uh, reached out to the Code Week organization and I asked, well, is there a, a, an option to, to automate this? And uh, Alan from the Code Week organization was very helpful with uh, uh, getting that uh, organized because the activity, Franca and the uh, people of uh, of a uh, um, school were quite similar to each other. They were all doing something with the old to code, mm -hmm. and with uh, with some tricks in uh, in a spreadsheet program. Um, uh, we made uh, individual uh, uh, activities um, because every group is doing their version of uh, O2 code, and we jumped quite uh, quite remarkably from position 40 to position 21 yes, and i'm very very, well very i'm very jealous i think 
uh, we are going to do our best effort to be in the top three next year. Okay. Um, <laughs> co 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 compliments to uh, Poland and to, uh, I believe, Malta and uh, I believe Turkey were the top three yeah, uh, contestants. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's 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 it, it says a lot about uh, about those countries and uh, the ambitions they have for uh, learning to code. And in the Netherlands, we have a similar ambition uh, with a, a very big curriculum um, uh, revision. We are going to include digital literacy into the core curriculum of every student in the Netherlands. And I'm very uh, grateful that Franca and her team uh, already started with well, let's explore this this area. Let's explore how we can learn everyone a little bit of computational thinking. And especially in the Brainport area, that's uh, an area around Eindhoven with companies like Philips and ASML. Um, um, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of positivity going on over there. So now I, I know you're both very creative. Uh, we, I know that from Ramon because I speak to him quite often. And Franca, you have just proven to be very creative. And I don't know if you know, but next year is Code Week's 10th anniversary. It's our 10th birthday. So uh, do you have any ideas in general? Uh, you know, please make them come. Maybe you have something now that we should do an uh, even bigger Code Week dance all over Europe at the same time, or I don't know, any, any crazy ideas you would like to share? right now oh, oh we are in uh, maybe we can do a make it week uh, with the whole uh, europe you're all invited we we are going to do that in uh, in march it's open uh, so everyone uh, can join us and and can uh, share uh... okay and ramon well, uh, I expected already a question similar to that. Uh, <laughs> I think the, the, the big idea behind Code Week is learning to code and to integrate everything we have. Now we have a course in Scratch and we have a, an, uh, a course in Haiti and a course in Python. And uh, well, it's, it's my personal mission to connect those uh, uh, separate activities into one, what we call in, in the Netherlands, a door open the layer line, a connecting learning path. It's, uh, okay, it's a little bit yes. lost in translation that someone starts in Scratch, transitions to Haiti, and then goes on Go into uh, Python. Yeah. Uh, so we can move past the point of nice activities, learning something yeah. very special. Mm -hmm. And th that's the reason why I'm so, so grateful with Franca. All those uh, smaller classrooms started with uh, an O2 code and then did something else or something extra. So I saw pictures of yeah. uh, robots being programmed, uh, uh, programs being written, and even smaller steps in uh, in uh, drawing with chalk on the on the floor. And th there's a lot of positivity uh, going on in the, in the brain part area. Fantastic. Thank you so much, both of you, for uh, coming here to us. Uh, online in our little studio. Um, Jakob, we're going to look a little bit at uh, social media now, right? The top, yeah. the top tweet. Thank you yes. so much. Yes, exactly. Yes, uh, I have prepared because we have looked also at the uh, social media debate uh, and to see what uh, was driving the, especially on Twitter, the debate during Code Week. Uh, and we saw a couple of um, a couple of interesting posts that I wanted to share now. And let me start with the community because there, of course, uh, that's at the heart of Code Week. Um, and no surprise at all that uh, tweets from Turkey were very numerous, and also some tweets were among the top tweets that were retweeted and and liked. Um, so you see here uh, some of the tweets from uh, the top uh, Turkish school, uh, one of the biggest ones, uh, tweeting about Code Week, uh, then another tweet in the middle, and then I saw also many tweets from Spain. So this tweet, this tweet uh, from uh, Elena uh, was also one of the most, uh, let's say, retweeted or most liked. Um, then we have uh, some more tweets from Spain and also France. So we see really that that the, the, the word was uh, was spreading across Europe. Uh, and please, if you want uh, 
you can still tweet with the code week hashtag. Uh, we had also some companies um, that uh, tweeted. So we had Apple, we had Minecraft uh, from Microsoft, and we had also Meet and Code, uh, which is supported by SAP. So we are also, of course, happy that the, these companies post and uh, and tweet. And we had also some uh, government institutions such as the European Commission or several French ministries also tweeted about Code Week. So we are very very grateful also for this support and now i see um you know in the backstage i see that there is uh, some fun and good lights going on and now the guys are switching it off i don't i don't know why you are you guys switching it off because we <laughs> wanted to see it you were partying hard and uh, now you switch off the lights it's a pity but okay maybe you will switch it on later on so anika this as you know we are our winners of the eu code week hackathon and yes. if you allow me i will now ask them a couple of questions congratulations yes congratulations once more to slovenia so this is the team strasio from slovenia i hope that i'm saying the your your team name team name correctly and uh, first of all tell me how did you celebrate do you are the winners for how long two weeks almost uh, was there some celebration let's let's say we, it was similar to that <laughs> similar to that okay yes. can you show the lights again <laughs> switch them on but in the meantime can you now nah, that's cool can you remind us what uh, uh, what was the solution what was your solution about and and uh, with what with which application did you actually won um our solution was uh, a mobile app and a web service uh that were called smart food um they provided uh, basically um a solution that could uh, reduce food waste um yeah that would probably sum it up yeah correctly yeah i think the the jury because it was the jury vote that 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 uh, that gave you the points they were impressed with the fact that you were more mature than the other let's say than the other solutions you also mentioned in your presentation that you had already some pre-agreements or some chats with uh, with some companies that would be interested in 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 your solution so how is this going now? Um, do you have, uh, did, did the winning of the hackathon help you to get more energy and get more into the business? Yes, I, I think we our energy level bumped up and we're still uh, continuing to, to uh, evolve our, our idea and uh, continue working on it. So mm -hmm. we have future plans for that also. That's very good. Can you tell us a little bit your what your background is? Are you all coders, or what roles did you did you actually have in your team? Uh, we are basically schoolmates. Um, these two guys are coders um, mostly, um, and us we just joined because we thought uh, like we function very good as a team, so we thought we should uh, do this together, and uh, I guess in the end it worked out pretty well. Okay what was when you look at the whole journey because you know the journey started uh, much earlier than the actual final hackathon you had a hackathon in slovenia in september if i'm not mistaken right yes um, what was the most difficult part on this journey that's the first question and second what did you learn the most uh, during the journey well we learned mostly how to teamwork because our application was based on uh, each of our each of our specialties. Like they, bo both of them are coders, I'm sort of a designer, so each of us had to put something in it. And getting this together, getting our uh, knowledge of stuff together, I think was quite challenging. Uh, and of course, to, to to just get the idea. Usually, the uh, to get an idea is the most uh, hard part of something because you have to invent something and then develop it if you want to. Yeah, um, and actually put it on a level that would be interesting for the actual users. Yes. Mm -hmm. What were the reactions from your families, from your friends when they found out that you won the the hackathon? <laughs> uh, I think they were really uh, proud of us and actually quite excited, I would say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, so now maybe my last question, what are the next steps? Are you still studying at the school or are you already at the university or 
or how will you continue working on this on this project? Uh, we are still in uh, uh, high school, um, so uh, as the time will let us, um, we will definitely work uh, uh, in the future on the project, and we are already planning a lot of different things how to actually. Um, make it into an actual app that would be interesting for the users and uh, how to connect with different uh, companies, how to actually uh, pull through the whole thing. So yeah, the, the future, I think it might actually come something out of, out of this, uh, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, if you, and now the really last one, if you had a chance to speak to kids who are now eight, 10 years old, and uh, and the teachers bring coding classes coding activities to their school what would you recommend to them would you encourage them to 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 you know take it actively and and, and join the um, join the coding activities yes i guess we would it's very it's a, it's a very cre creative type of um like task so i guess it would be cool for kids to start earlier uh to learn how to code because it brings a lot of positive um positive things with it yeah. it can be a lot of fun and it should be like started from the the fun perspective from the game perspective where you like to code where you like to create even if stupid stuff you like to create them so yeah. definitely don't stop start and then that can emerge into like bigger projects as you as, as like kids get older and they can start producing some amazing products with it like you did yeah. Like, like you yeah. did, yeah. I think the creativity is very important that you can create stuff that they also understand that they can you can do things that are useful, uh, like you did, uh, but to understand it maybe when they are younger. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Great. Well, guys, thank you very much. Continue the party. The lights are amazing. Uh, you still need some <laughs> orange T-shirts. I think we will ship them to you so that you can you can wear them at the occasions like this. And uh, fingers crossed for you know for your for your work and for for working with the application. And and thank you once more for for being part of the EU Code Week hackathons this year. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye. And so, Annika, we move to the next part when we will talk about um, education for teachers, actually, or support for teachers rather than education, because we had a EU Code Week MOOC, uh, which was uh, in the form of a boot camp. And we will have uh, some uh, colleagues and members of the community who will have more information on that. Right, Annika? Yes. Hello, Ariana and Maya. So uh, you're very welcome. Ariana is a teacher trainer and you're also part of the EU Code Week team. Uh, but Maya, we haven't met before. You're from Skopje in North Macedonia and you're a leading teacher and you have run this study group uh, during the, like a local group during the, the MOOC. But first, before we get to you, I'd just like to ask you, Ariana, can you tell us a little bit about the course for someone, you know, how, what did people learn? How did it go? Is it possible to join still what's going on right now how many people yeah thank you thank you Annika uh, it's great to be here with you today so about the MOOC uh, can you imagine we almost have uh, 2,000 participants so that's really really great and uh, what's even better is that uh, uh, these participants are very active uh, they actively take part in uh, our discussions in the forums and they share a lot of their ideas and uh, they create the work uh, a lot of new uh, projects that uh, and they share that with uh, the community so there are in this MOOC there are a lot of uh, different types of uh, tasks activity exercises or as we call them workouts and uh, stretching exercises just like in a boot camp yeah uh, and uh, so a lot of practical activities for teachers uh, so that they can try things out uh, see how it works uh, do them with their students uh, the topics that we have focused on in the in the MOOC are uh, the code week of course and all the great opportunities that the eu code week offers uh, then we also explore uh, coding uh, programming computational thinking uh, we also focused on uh, uh, raising awareness of diversity and inclusion in coding uh, we explored the potential of artificial intelligence uh, tinkering making uh, 
unplugged activities. These are my favorite, I would say. Also robotics. So great work, really great work shared by the participants. Um, or to, in a nutshell, I would say we have three modules, two live events, uh, including a teach meet with some great, great ideas by the participants. Uh, and also one final assignment, uh, the participants have to add uh, an activity to the map and uh, then submit it uh, on the platform. Uh, and in this MOOC, as you mentioned, uh, we also have uh, a blended learning approach with on-site study groups, uh, which means that uh, uh, there are uh, 35 face-to-face school-based study groups in 11 countries and they all work together alongside with the uh, online course. But Maya is here to tell us more. Yes, so Maya, how, because the MOOC, uh, the, the bootcamp MOOC is in English, right? Which is a bit of an, uh, a barrier for maybe many teachers. Uh, how, how, but how has it worked for you, Maya? How was it? Uh, I must say that it was one very, very, very excited experience because I think that, uh, the teachers in my school like it a lot. Um, I, I have joined it, uh, this activity as a study group leader because each year I'm doing activities during cold week, but alone. And this was opportunity to, to involve more teachers from my school to do this. And as you mentioned, uh, language barrier or some sometimes in these uh, digital competencies are something that teachers are afraid and they don't want to join the MOOC because they think that they they will not manage to finish till the end and that they will have problems while while doing all the activities because this is not so easy course like the others <laughs> because there were so many activities that uh, teachers should pass in a so little time I would say and I think that uh, this um, this opportunity to work as a, as a group, to help each other, to share experience, to talk about everything that is mentioned there was something that uh, was uh, very motivational for, for teachers in my school. And, and, and did you manage to meet face to face? Uh, yes, yes. We have, uh, uh, I work in primary school, Krasnami Sirkov, it's in Skopje. And um, uh, we have uh, hybrid teaching. Some of the students are in school, some one are online, and we are doing in shifts. So it was a little bit difficult to organize, but we have uh, regular meetings that were online. And also we had meetings that were face-to-face -face in schools with teachers. And how the course was going by, these were more intensive and intensive and more frequent meetings because they wanted to say, can I do this? Or maybe I shall do this. Maybe I will try this. I'm going to try this. And they were so enthusiastic. And I I must say that I'm very happy because I managed to evolve uh, more teachers, especially teachers that haven't uh, done any coding with students before this, this code. Week. Wow. Good. So now you will have some uh, some colleagues for next year. Yes, uh, for sure. Yes. <laughs> and I'm expecting the number of teachers to, to rise. Fantastic. Next year. Ariana, from your perspective, how has the, the, the mixed approach uh, gone? Uh, well, the blended congrats, approach. Yeah, first, congratulations to Maya and uh, all the other study group leaders who have shared their experiences with us. Uh, I think uh, it worked really well. Uh, it uh, helped uh, uh, more teachers to complete the, the MOOC mm -hmm. and also what is even more important to bring coding and computational thinking in their classrooms. Fantastic. Yeah, that's the whole goal with Code Week. Um, any lesson learned, uh, Maya, from uh, anything we should think about for the next edition? So I, I can say that uh, I have learned something and uh, that is that if we want to do something, we can organize, help each other, and together we can achieve everything. I think that teachers from my schools now believe in that. And we Fantastic. are going to make even more activities for the next year. Okay, that's uh, good. It's our 10th not, anniversary. Not just for the cold week, but until the December, yeah. we are going to make more activities because there are more ideas that they didn't manage to realize now during this period of time. 
as we say uh, in the team, every week is code week, but we yes. celebrate in October. So yes. we would like to have activities all year round, of course. Thank you so much yes. to both of you for, for joining. Uh, we're, got, we're coming to an end of this wrap up event. Um, I think Jakob will come back yes, on I'm, I'm screen. Here. Um, but we have some some more things to say, Jakob. How is yes, it going? Yes, we have some more th things to say. First of all, I want to remind about the Mentimeter. It's still open. Thanks also for all people who post comments under the live stream. But I think we have still one news that we want to <laughs> unveil and that we we want to promise that uh, in a uh, in few days that will be available. Right, Annika? Yes, so we're, we are very excited. We're going to launch a podcast series. Um, and these podcasts are going to be hosted by Ariana, who you just saw on, on, uh, on stage, and her colleague Eugenia, also from the EU Code Week team. Um, and they will cover a wide range uh, of, uh, of, of topics from coding, media literacy, coding and media literacy, coding and poetry, coding and art, coding and robotics, gaming, game design, you name it. We, we, they cover really every subject. So, And I think it's, it's a great uh, way how to spend autumn, uh, rainy, you know, windy, cold days just to uh, put something in your ears and, and listen to EU Code Week podcast. So they should be available uh, very soon. I think we are talking about days. We, are, we are, have them ready. We just need to... Uh, bring them online in a nice um, package so that you can listen to them while you are, for example, walking or running or whenever you, you like to listen to the podcast. And they will be on the, you know, where podcasts normally are. So Spotify, Google and Apple podcasts. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's... So uh, look that out is, for that. That is the the kind of the, the, the last news of the day. Um, once more, just a reminder, we have broken the record now. We have uh, over 73,000 activities. But uh, as we were saying uh, the whole day today, it's, um, it's still possible to register activities until the end of the year. So please do so. You can check also everything on the Code Week website, on the scoreboard, and, uh, and get involved. And I think that's really now the time to... Let's Don't forget to use the challenges. We have yes. 20, there, everything is translated to 29 languages. You have everything from making beautiful flower beds to AI bots and you name it. And we also have the treasure hunt. We just updated it a bit with some new um, pins so you can play the, the treasure hunt and learn uh, about the kind of computing history in Europe at the same time as you also learn some basic coding. It's a fantastic mix. Um, and, and yeah, last, but last, not least. last but not least, don't forget to report your activities uh, as we have talked about it now. Okay, well, big thanks to all the organizers. Big thanks to everyone who met, who helped to to bring the code week to the almost to the sky. But as we say, the sky is the limit, so we still are not yet there. We we hope that we will have more activities. But really, thank you. Thanks for being um, so active this year uh, and. Um, more content and more information and more opportunities are coming our way or your way uh, still soon. And as we said... And, and just yes. so if you have ideas for the 10th anniversary, mail them to us. We are, we are here to... We want to do something very special next year. So just let us know. C creativity, creative ideas are very welcome. Yeah. So indeed, next year, a big year for Code Week. So let's get ready for it and let's start getting ready for it already now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good bye. night and take care. Bye bye. Bye. Coding and creativity. They give you power at your fingertips. So many new opportunities start with a simple idea and a line of code. You don't believe me? Just watch. You can build a website to support a local business. For example, a shop selling flowers. Just look at all these gorgeous colours. Or you can develop an app and help people stay fit and healthy. I know you'd like that. You can also make your own game and play with your friends. With creative coding, you can fix many annoying problems. For example, use data to help your city get rid of a traffic jam. 
And of course, coding can awake the artist within you. For instance, you can create and share music with your friends. A simple line of code can help you change the world. You are just a click away from learning. Go to the codeweek.eu website and kick off your coding journey.